Hey guys, Ivan here, and the question in this video is, are current modern bodybuilding pros training hard? I'm sure you already heard Dorian Yates, Arnold Schwarzenegger, even Tom Platt saying that today's bodybuilders are not training very hard, that they are relying more on PEDs and that they are not really lifting the weights as hard as the old school guys used to. Now, we all know that Tom Platt trained as hard as he possibly could. The same thing goes with Arnold, but we're not really gonna compare that era to modern bodybuilding because those guys were much, much smaller, not the same league. After 1993, when Dorian Yates won his second Mr. Olympia and showed the world how big can a bodybuilder get, that is when bodybuilders are actually getting much bigger. So that's the era that we're gonna compare to modern bodybuilding, the 90s. So who do we have in the 90s? Well, of course, Dorian Yates. Was Dorian training hard? Probably harder than any other pro out there ever, really. But uh, what about the other guys? Who else was there in the top? Well, guys like Kevin Leveroni, Flex Wheeler, Chris Cormier, Sean Ray and the others. Those were basically your top pros. Did they train hard? Harder than the modern bodybuilders? Well, here you're watching Flex Wheeler and Chris Cormier training together. These two guys were partners for a while. And uh, the impression that I get while I'm watching their videos is that they have extremely, extremely good genetics. They're so genetically gifted for bodybuilding, but is their intensity to the roof? Hell no, not even close to Dorian Yates level. These guys were basically just pumping up. They were doing lots of volume. You will never see them going to failure. Is this hard training? Well, there is a lot of focus there and they are staying in the gym for quite some time. I'm sure they do experience some pain and they do get tired, but they are not pushing the envelope insanely hard. They are not getting into that pain zone, the uncomfortable, ugly zone. They are basically just pumping the weights, trying to connect with the muscle the best that they can, to contract that optimally. And that's about it. They were staying injury free. They didn't want to risk it, pushing the envelope. These guys are much stronger than they actually were lifting but they never truly went to that extreme level of intensity. Don't you agree? They are extremely lean in this video, so this is obviously right before the contest, but they were training the same way in the offseason. I just chose this clip because it's most attractive for the video, for you guys. But this is basically it. This was their intensity level. Next up, we have Kevin Livroni. Kevin Leveroni was extremely strong, right here you're watching him bench pressing 4 plates, easily. He's making these weights look like they're fake, literally, so he was very very strong. But intensity is relative, it's not how strong you are, it's how far, how close to failure you're going. Kevin Leveroni right here is having fun, he's lifting this easily. Look at his face, he's not even struggling, this is easy for him. Yeah, this is crazy heavy weight, but it's not that hard for him. Of course, to get this strong, you need to train very, very hard. You need to push yourself every single time you're in the gym, basically. So it's not easy to get this strong. He wasn't born this strong. Yeah, he was genetically gifted extremely, so I'm sure he didn't really take too long to get this strong. And I'm sure it wasn't that hard for him as it could be for some other people. But it doesn't really matter. What we're talking about is how hard was he training? not how strong he was. For him, 4 plates on incline or flat bench wasn't that much. So he was strong, he was lifting heavy, but his intensity wasn't really that high, let's be real. I hate it so much when people are saying heavy weights and high reps. You cannot combine those two. If you can do high rep, if you can do 20 rep with the weight, it's not heavy enough for you, it's lightweight for you. If you can do 6, 4, 2, 8 reps, let's say, to failure, that's heavyweight. 20, 30, 50 reps, that's not heavy. It's maybe heavy for somebody who is weaker than you, but for you, obviously, it's not that heavy. It's not that intense, so in my opinion, Kevin Leveroni wasn't really pushing it. He was extremely strong, like a powerlifter, probably stronger than most powerlifters, and he was lifting very, very heavy, but he wasn't pushing the intensity to the roof. What about Sean Ray? Well, this one is pretty obvious. He was really outspoken on the fact that he was training smart, quote unquote. He truly embraced that Lee Haney saying, stimulate, don't annihilate. And that's how he was training, never to failure. He was always two, three, maybe even five or even more reps 
shy of failure. So he was just, you know, pumping the muscle, contracting the muscle. He was also extremely genetically gifted, but he wasn't really training extremely hard. No. We can basically go over the other 90s bodybuilders, but nobody really trained extremely hard. Nobody but Dorian, if you don't count Ronnie Coleman in. Ronnie was also training extremely hard, but he was competitive mainly during the 2000s and the very late of the 90s. I don't think he was training harder than Dorian though. If you watch him train, you will notice that he is training very, very intensely and you will say, wow, this is really high intensity, but it's probably not harder than Dorian. But then, when you find out that he was actually doing that two times a week and Dorian only once a week, then you get the idea how crazy <laughs> the Ronnie was. But I think that's just his genetics. He was able to recover super fast. So he was able to do that stuff. So it wasn't really that hard for him. You cannot really see the pain in his face and you cannot really see him struggling as much as Dorian used to. He was training probably heavier, way more frequently and he had higher number of sets but his intensity wasn't probably as high as Dorian's, although he's one of the hardest training bodybuilders of all time. We are skipping the 2000s and the early 2010s because we are focusing on what Dorian said. So we're comparing 90s to current pros. Right here is Luke Sando, who is rowing five plates. <laughs> he's actually doing barbell rows with five plates. That's extremely hard. That is really heavy. Then you'll see him squatting six plates for a couple of reps with a good form, very deep squats. It's not 800 pounds like Ronnie, but it's very, very heavy and he's definitely training hard. And here he's T-bar rowing who knows how many plates. So definitely very, very strong bodybuilder. And his intensity, as you can see, is very, very high. He's absolutely pushing the weights. He's absolutely pushing himself with intensity and he's extremely strong. Very, very strong. Stronger than most powerlifters in the world. Here he's doing some hack squats with, again, who knows how many plates. It's, it's too much to count. But he's controlling them quite nicely. He's going very, very deep, as you can see. So it's a good form. It's a lot of weight. And he's one of the modern bodybuilders, one of the top pros, probably top 10 in the world, depending on his shape. And he is definitely training harder than Kevin, than Flex, than Chris Cormier, than Sean Ray, and all the others basically from the 90s. If I'm wrong, tell me who do you think trained harder than him, except Dorian. I can't really think of anybody else from the 90s. So, Luke Sando is definitely training harder than uh, most 90s bodybuilders. And Dorian agrees with this. When they asked him about Luke, he said it, he trains very hard. Alright, so next we have another top 10 Olympian, the current pro, Akim Williams. I think he's a former powerlifter, but if he isn't, he's definitely stronger than most of them. Because this is seven plates, and he's wrapping this weight. He's doing this for reps. With wide grip, he's actually not even using his back that much. His back is pretty straight. So, I mean, this is amazing. This is amazing. He's doing sets with this much weight. I actually asked him in the comment section, why is he doing this? Is he doing this because he thinks this is the best way to train, to grow? He said no, this is just what he enjoys doing. So, obviously, another top pro, the current pro, Akim Williams, training very hard and definitely much harder than Chris Cormier or Kevin Leveroni or whoever. Next up, we have Ian Wallier, who did not compete at the Mr. Olympia this year. He didn't manage to qualify, but last year he did qualify by winning a pro show. So he's one of the top pros. And as you can see right here, he is uh, having fun with 150s on the shoulder press with Chris Bumstead, his brother-in-law, helping him behind. Now he's benching and this is five plates. Not only that he's uh, lifting five plates on a bench press, but look at the ease that he's having while doing this. He's having fun. This is so smooth. He's using zero momentum. This is just straight, beautiful, clean reps. He's having fun with this. I'm sure he can bench six plates quite easily as well. Next, we have Josh Lenartowitz, who is right here, squatting six plates. And I'm not sure the, the last two plates are they 45 pounds or 20 kilos or 25 kilos actually i'm not sure about that but uh, anyways it's a heavy weight and this guy's extremely strong he is doing walking lunges with three or even four plates i believe you can find that you can google it but uh, this guy is extremely strong and he's always pushing the envelope with the weights and with the intensity and that is why he is so huge and that's why his legs are looking enormous right here next to him is Max Charles, who is suspicious, very, very suspicious. 
and so is his lifting form. What do you guys think about this? <laughs> well, it's it's laughable, to be brutally honest. It's laughable. This guy is definitely not training very hard. I and mean, what is this? He's barely even moving the bar, like an inch up and down. And he is doing this pretty much with all the other exercises. You can check that out. But basically not very intense training bodybuilder from modern era. But anyways, it works for him. He's a top pro. Then you have also guys like Regan Grimes, who are training very frequently and they're doing the full range of motion and everything, but their intensity is definitely not very high. This is sort of what Flex and Chris Cormier used to do and Sean Ray. Just a lot of reps, a lot of sets, focused, tracing the contraction, tracing the pump, uh, being safe, not going to failure, doing a lot of frequency, basically slow, controlled, and that's about it. And it works for him. He's having great results and he's staying injury free, probably. So good for him. It works for him, but uh, he's definitely not extremely hard training bodybuilder. You can check other videos, but he's basically saying himself, high volume, low intensity. Then you have Nathan Diasha, who is lifting pretty heavy. Not extremely heavy, but what I like about Nathan and the way he's working out is that he always has the tempo. His tempo is always so fluent. He doesn't stop when he's tired. He doesn't make any breaks. He doesn't pause on the bottom or on the top. He's always having the same tempo. He's just pumping the weight, no matter how heavy the weight is. And he definitely is one of the hard training bodybuilders, one of the top pros as well. By the way, I'm not sure why is he having this kind of form. His coach is Matt Jensen, who is pretty much an expert when it comes to execution. So I don't know why he's doing this kind of deadlifts uh, with bending his back this much. It's odd, but uh, it's a lot of weight. And you can check his other videos. He's definitely lifting very, very heavy and very tensely. Surely you noticed that I only mentioned uh, bodybuilders that are not exactly at a top level. But what about the top ones? Let's go over them now. So Phil Heath, it wouldn't be fair not to mention him. He only retired. A year ago, not officially though, but uh, yeah, we didn't see him compete yet. And Phil is definitely not known for training super intensely. He's also doing the pump work, lots and lots of sets and lots of reps. And he's not training with a training partner ever. But if you watch him prepping for 2017 Mr. Olympia, you saw that his intensity is pretty high. He's training pretty hard. He's not doing any benching or six reps on squat type of things. But uh, he's doing the machines mainly, and the free weights as well, but only high reps. Lots of sets, high reps, but it's a pretty pretty heavy weight, and uh, he's training hard for sure. You cannot say that he isn't training hard. So, another hard training bodybuilder. Not super intense, but pretty hard training. The guy who beat him, who took his title away in 2018, Sean Roden, definitely was training pretty hard in 2018 when he was prepping for that show. But uh, usually, he is not exactly known for intensity. As you can see right here, what the hell is this? He's doing shoulder presses with a uh, squat machine. So, <laughs> he's not definitely very, very intense. And that is something that Dorian Yates was actually pointing out pretty much. Dorian actually said that after the host of the show showed him the picture of Brandon Curry. So, he was definitely referring to Brandon mainly. And it is true, Brandon is definitely not training very hard. He's doing lots of volume, lots of uh, sets and reps and lots of focus, but not a lot of intensity. He actually admitted that he's relying more on PEDs than he's relying on training. And that is something that is normal today in today's modern bodybuilding. But uh, he's also injury free, unlike Dorian. So he's probably a smarter approach and he just won the Mr. Olympia. The quality of his physique is not as high as Dorian's, but it's working for him. He's the Mr. Olympia. He will be remembered as the guy who won 2019 Mr. Olympia, but not a bodybuilder who trained super intensely. Dexter Jackson, 2008 Mr. Olympia, is almost 15 now. So it's not really fair to use him in this comparison because this guy doesn't use pretty much any free weights. He's only doing the machines because he's trying to preserve what he's got. He's 50, guys, and he's still in the game. So it's not really fair to use him as an example. Maybe when he was younger, because he competed in the 90s as well. And uh, right now, he's not really training that hard, but he is remaining uh, very, very big and uh, he's keeping a lot of quality gains. He is still in the top, which is amazing. Props to Dexter, nothing bad to say about him. He's one of the top bodybuilders in the history of bodybuilding, if you ask me. Also, the guy who placed ahead of Dexter in 2019 Mr. Olympia, Hari Chopin, 
is another extremely intense training bodybuilder. He is training very very heavy, so Dorian can't really say anything bad about him. This guy is definitely lifting some heavy heavy weight and he is definitely training very intense. Look at those walking lunges. That's crazy, that's crazy. And that shows on his physique as well. Then we also have guys like Cedric, who never really placed super high the Mr. Olympia, but could have. Is the reason for that not training very hard? Probably not, it's just probably dieting. Cedric has a lot of muscle and a lot of quality muscle as well, but I never really saw him training super hard. He's mainly focused on contraction, you know, perfect form, perfect execution, lots of reps, lots of sets. Probably smarter approach though, but uh, it really helped him carving up that kind of old school perfect physique pretty much. All he needs to do is, uh, I said this a uh, billion times, get lean for this show. But uh, if we talk about the intensity of his workouts, definitely not extremely hard. He is definitely not one of the bodybuilders who train very hard, but whatever he is doing, it's working for him. He just needs to work on his diet and that's all. If we're talking about the intensity and bodybuilders, we must mention the notorious and known for intensity crew trained by JP Crew. Luke Sando is kind of a part of it, but this guy right here, James Hollingshead, who is a pro but is not exactly an Olympian yet, so he never won a pro show, he is training extremely heavy, he is strong like a bull, and he's always pushing the intensity through the roof. But in my opinion, the hardest training bodybuilder of today's modern bodybuilding, who is unfortunately not a pro, not just yet, would be Jordan Peters. I don't think anybody else is training harder than this guy. You can check his Instagram out, but this guy is pushing it to his absolute limits. He never leaves anything in reserve. This guy is crazy when it comes to training, and he's gotta be one of the biggest bodybuilders pound for pound of all time. If you're wondering what is the intensity of William Bonek, the runner-up of 2019 Mr. Olympia, you should check out this video right here. You can see what his intensity looks like, and let me tell you, it's a lot of volume, it's pretty decent intensity, it's nothing crazy, it's pretty much a volume type of training, but it's pretty hard. Wesley was struggling to keep up with the volume, but he definitely wasn't able to keep up with the weights, because Bonek is much stronger. And I also have to mention Flex Lewis, whose training intensity is also extremely hard. Not only that he is lifting very very heavy and that he is going to failure, but he is actually doing a lot of sets like that, which is really impressing me every time I see him work out. Hopefully next year we'll see him at the Mr. Olympia in the Open Division and I'm sure that kind of training will pay off. Without having a weight restriction, he will definitely look insane on that stage. And it's gonna be obvious how hard this guy is training actually. Alright guys, so that pretty much sums it up for this video. You tell me, was Dorian really right? Were Arnold and Tom Platts right? Are current pros really training uh, not as intensely as they were training back in the 90s or the 80s or the 70s, whatever you think, tell me down below in the comment section. I will just uh, leave you with that. So you tell me, I'm not gonna tell you. I made my comments, you can make your own conclusion based on this. So I'm hoping you enjoyed the video, if you did like it, and please subscribe for more bodybuilding videos. Thank you very much guys for watching, all the best and bye bye.